the circle geometry question. Now, circle geometry, um, sometimes we don't look at this very much. For the sake of your extension one mark, please look at circle geometry, okay? Uh, not just, like the hard bit about this was not like, oh, remembering which of the 20 properties of a circle I'm supposed to use. It was seeing into the circle and understanding the geometry that was there. Um, there are lots of lines and intervals and chords flying around. So people got confused, okay? Let's have a look at this. Um, the, the biggest problems throughout all these parts were people omitting important things from their reasoning. Here was the first one. Uh, if you have a circle, just look up at this, okay? If you have a circle, okay, and you have a chord, or if you like, you have an arc that corresponds to that chord, okay? Question. Here's an angle. Here is another angle. Tell me which of these angles has been subtended by that chord on the circumference. Which of the angles? Is it alpha or beta? And the answer is, it's alpha and it's beta. They're both subtended by the same chord, by the same arc, and they're both on the circumference. But not, not the same angle, are they? What, what are they, by the way? What's the relationship between these two? They're supplementary because they're opposite angles in a cyclic chord. They're not equal unless they're both pi on two, but most people were saying angles standing on the same arc, angles subtended by the same chord on the circumference, etc. And the thing you were missing was that they must be in the same segment. They are in the same, se same segment, but almost no one said that they were. And that's kind of a critical part of the reasoning, right? We're not trying to be, you know, really arbitrarily um, narrow on the wording. It's because if you don't have that wording there, you've lost the point of the reasoning, okay? So that was the first problem that a lot of people missed out. You may have gotten lucky depending on how good the rest of your reasoning was and you might have still got those two marks, but um, if the rest of your reasoning was flaky and you didn't say that, you would have lost something. Um, just a brief thing, here's my diagram, okay? The best responses um, drew a nice, decent diagram and they used color in some way, right? So that they could see the triangles better and what the angles were that you needed, okay? When you have a look at this next part, uh, you can see I mentioned this before. Here are my subsidiary di diagrams over here on the right. Did you have to draw those? No. But the people who did, and a small number of you did, were much more successful at being able to say which sides correspond to which ones, right? Um, some people, when they write out this relationship here, right? Um, instead of saying, say, AB on CK, you can see why I've got AB on CK, right? What they might have said was uh, something like this, AB, whoops, sorry, AB on BD, okay? <laughs> now, here's the thing. If you think about what the fractions are, if you match up AB, BD and CK, CD, it's actually an equivalent set of fractions. But it's just that it doesn't match the reasoning because they're not corresponding sides in different triangles. They're sides in the same triangle. Okay? Now, I suppose the people who got this wrong didn't notice because they didn't write the reason. They didn't say corresponding sides in similar triangles. They just said this on this is this on this. Okay? okay, now in the previous part, you would have proved that they were similar, but you haven't said anything about the properties of the sides. Okay? And when you have a look, I, I've talked about this before um, in extension two, sometimes we're like, oh, okay, it's not the emphasis of question to talk about similar triangles, so just move on. Look at part C and tell me why I knew to do this. There's two reasons I knew. Look carefully. Number one, part one just says, show that it's similar, right? So the emphasis of part one is about the similarity. Part two, look at what's given to you, and then look at how many marks are there, right? We're looking for the reasoning. Anyone can take the BD times AC, anyone can take that result and just shuffle algebra around um, using that fact and using part one, okay? But we're looking for you to give us reasons. Well, that's why there are two marks there, okay? Um, in other cases where you're trying to prove something else, yeah, sure, say by inspection if you like. But this question gave you enough quiz you weren't supposed to do that, okay? All right, once you got there, um, basically this question is here entirely to sneak in the golden ratio because the golden ratio is freaking awesome, okay? Um, it was tricky because you're like, wait a second, Part three says use part two, but part two is about a quadrilateral, not a pentagon. So you needed to add in this extra construction and see where the X's and the ones were related. Um, 
you were lucky in that some of you could be clever enough, and it was okay if you did this, to bluff your way through. Okay, I think I can see which parts of this are supposed to be X's and which parts are supposed to be 1's in order to generate the required quadratic, okay? Um, but yeah, you were supposed to draw a proper diagram with a proper pentagon. So did you have to have that line with the X squared equals 1 plus X? Could you have the line before that and show sufficient understanding? Are you talking about, sorry, so let's let's number these lines. So I've got line one, yeah. two, three. Which line are you referring to? Um, so, I, so I wrote line one. Yep. But I didn't um, manage to, like I subbed in wrong numbers and I yep. didn't get line two. Would that be... And then, and then everything was wrong from there. Yeah, everything was wrong from there. But was it sufficient enough to have just line one to show that um, I was going to use something from part two? Um, the answer is no, and I'll tell you why. Um, line one basically is kind of equivalent to quoting a formula, right? Like quoting the cosine rule or something like that, okay? Now, quoting a rule is not what's being assessed. It's understanding and properly using that rule, um, which is why, you know, we give you the reference sheet to show you. You remembered it? Cool. But I need you to show me that you know how to use it. Um, just saying line one is just repeating what was said in part two. I need to see that you knew how to use that properly. So unfortunately, no. Okay, um, which is why I've said <laughs> effective use of part two. Because some people use part two, but incorrectly. Okay. Right, are there um, any questions before we move on to part D? Okay, so let's have a look at this. Now, <laughs> let's be clear, you didn't have to draw a diagram as awesome as mine. <laughs> but, but, okay, I, I'm mainly drawing that for the sake of you understanding, like, what does it look like? But also so you can see that the, the worst thing that was done, and actually what was properly being assessed here, was that, let me just briefly get rid of these guys. When you have a look at this, and you're like, oh, there's a volume, and there are semicircles, okay? A lot of people were doing it like this. Right? They had, they had um, their cross sections that looked, um, and you get the idea. Okay? Now, this is what you would get if you formed a volume from a solid of revolution. And um, what would I have to rotate around to get this shape? The y equals x axis. So you've got an oblique axis. We've seen questions like this before. It can be done. Okay? Um, except for the fact that that's not what this question is about. There is actually no revolution happening at all. So the semicircle idea was kind of like a curveball to see if you recognize that. When you have a look, what I was trying to see was, have you oriented the cross sections correctly? And if you drew the cross sections separate to your diagram, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see that you understood that. Now, some of you tried to get something like this, right, like that, and then you did your cross section elsewhere. It, it wasn't really sufficient because I need to see them related to each other. Okay, so let me put those guys back. Um, it was a lot harder to draw an oblique looking diagram um, like the one I have on the right hand side, but those of you who did that had a much more, it was, it's a better diagram basically. I've put the one on the left hand side there because uh, it was perfectly acceptable if you did that. Okay. I really need to see the cross section together with the base at least once, at least once, so I can see that you get how they're oriented together. Okay. All right. Now, part two, uh, we unfortunately just got hit by a series of minor errors. Let's have a look. The first minor error was um, people didn't have a half there; they just went to pi r squared. Okay. Um, Oops, so you would have got 9 pi on 280 because you've gone all the way around instead of the semicircle. The second common error, and I made this error too when I was first writing this, and then I was like, wait, what have I done? Is um, using the diameter instead of the radius, right? That was a common error because um, we're so used to using the diameter and um, we forget to halve it and think, oh, wait, my formula for a semicircle's area requires the radius, okay? So pretty much from there, I think we were okay. You would have had a series of carried forward errors, okay, if you didn't. Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay, um, now it's worth pointing out, and I've said this for previous exams as well, and you've probably heard it before. If you make an error early on, for instance, you might forget to square, right? Like you just do pi r, pi d, or whatever, instead of pi r squared. That's a single error, but it, it dramatically simplifies what you've done later on. You didn't have to muck around with all of these guys here, which were a disaster. So you've made an error, but you've also simplified the question. So you've basically lost two marks. So this happens in all kinds of contexts, and that's what happened here if you made that kind of error. 
okay? As opposed to a numerical error that didn't make the question any easier.